Uh, will flexibility and improvisation return again? I don't know the answer, but I wish it would. Not only because our lives are that so we can nicer, but also because I'm convinced that innovations would grow better. I guess you students never draw a really working draw, uh, drawing in your studies. We don't. We learned afterwards, but nevertheless, the working drawing is our writing. With it, you turn your idea into reality. The working drawing doesn't address uh, colleagues or the uh, colleagues, it addresses the craftsman and the entrepreneur. Architect Harold Czech from Vienna once said that once the working drawing is drawn, all previous sketches and drawings are obsolete. You can, they can be thrown in the trash. It's a bit polemic, but that's the, the way Jay speaks. Can we make out the lines that one can see better than the drawings? What was that to cover? <laughs> yeah, I think it's better like this. <clears throat> the, the working drawing is true as it is, it's binding. The blueprint of its standards, it is coded, it's a writing, like a musical not, uh, notation. But yet it is a handwriting, specific and individual. That is what I like to show with my lecture. You can read much more in it than just how the building is made, about the architect himself, about the idea of the building, the material, the building process, and even about its time. My very first drawing as an architect, a cold winter day in a cold uh, farm, uh, surveying, surveying the existing building is often the first step of the project. The survey is first a collection of information, pra practical recording technique with pencil paper. And measuring tape. The colors are coded. The survey drawing is a reduction to only one information to the measures. Then follows the exact drawing to scale. A measure drawing by the Swiss architect Ernst Diesel. In order to avoid a mess of numbers and lines, the whole drawing must be well planned. It seems very easy, but to put the measures on the drawings is an art in itself. You can see it here. It seems so easy to do it. I structure my lecture in eight chapters and each chapter will focus on one topic. The chapters refer to different tasks, the different tasks of the drawing, to whom the drawing is addressed, uh, who must be able to read it. I start with the building process. Following drawings will show three completely different buildings, building processes. They also have refer to different cultural contexts. Nevertheless, all the women addresses the craftsmen. A working drawing from Studio, studio Mumbai in India, red ball pen on square paper. When I saw first this, this uh, drawing, I saw yeah, it's a sketch of the, uh, from the architect in his notebook. No, it is really it is a working drawing. The plan head, you see the bottom, and the office then testify that it's a true working drawing. The floor plan is projected and uh, projected directly in one to one scale on the ground of the construction site. 
That's the method uh, Ubuntu Studio works. This method of measuring and laying out the construction elements on the floor is exactly what the master builders of the master builders of the Gothic period did. The walls, the walls in the cathedrals were built without working drawings. The stone elements were drawn and projected directly on the floor. In the Middle Age, drawings were not meant to construct with. They served to illustrate the project for the client or for the patron. The architect as a pure planner is an invention of the Renaissance. Leo Battista Alberti describes him in his temples of William, Derry, Victoria. And I think then the must be was also the executor. It was only with the separation between planning and execution, between the architect and the craftsman, that the working ruin came into being in its present form as we use it today. Here in the case of Studio Mumbai, the sections and facades show how the finished building will look like. This is only possible through intensive communication between architect and craftsman, and that's the method uh, of Studio Mumbai, a very direct contact between architect and craftsman. The craftsman is crucial and it needs in the craftsman who know their trade. Quite different is this construction ruin of a reciprocal framework. In our chair, we did a research project. And the topic was the search for forgotten construction methods and renew them through new digital technologies. One of them is the reciprocal framework. You know, this system where you have, it's a bit like a cuddle. You have short spans and just uh, the forces go around. You don't have uh, primary and secondary uh, color, uh, structure. And it's very old uh, construction principle. The principle is old. Already Leonardo da Vinci made studies as it's Sebastian, Sebastian Sergio and later Fieber de Lorme in the 16th century. With this principle, you can reach large events with short elements. It's a chance to build with the more crooked columns. This is a work drawing of a pavilion made at the campus of ETH. It's made of simple roof slabs. In contrast to the Studio Mumbai, you don't see how the building should look like. It's, it's drawing on the right side. It's just for illustration. If you will build it, you really don't need it. You just can be the movie with these uh, lines of, of scissors. <clears throat> It's just uh, a building manual on how to put the, the elements together. Here, working drawing is not a drawing, but the text, the plan is heavily coded. One line corresponds to one roof slab. The numbers indicate the distance between the three loads for the connections. Each element is a number. You really can do it without having any picture. The picture is not necessary. It just shows you how it will look at the end. The working drawing tells us also a lot about cultural and geographic context. In the land market's cross section, all types of work are addressed, even the building specification is integrated in the section. The drawing is an instruction, a really instruction manual. But what does this tell us? Merck's houses are in the wilderness in the Australian outback. There is no professional photo drive. The landscape 
state marker or its known ground has to be able to meet the drawing. What does the working drawing tell us about the material? That's the topic of the next chapter. The drawing of a steel construction is a, of a completely different nature than one of a concrete building. The specific pitfalls of the material are reflected in the information and in the way the drawing is presented. Let's start with spring. The dimension of the indi individual brick dictates all other dimensions. The dimension of the whole house is a multiple of the size of the individual brick. So this term determines all the elements, opening, all thickness, height, and length of the whole surface. That is only, of course, if you do not want to cut the bricks, but I hope you do. Sigurlevens never crushed a stone. There is an anecdote about his uh, construction site that when he heard the noise of a crash brick, he ran on the side and it was not more and more fun for the workers. And I think you can see in his drawing. It's a working in his working drawing, the material becomes almost touchable. I think you can even smell the brick. The blur pencil traces resemble that is typical extra white mortar joints. Also, it is drawn very meticulous. It is a very econ economic drawing. Look here. Leverance draws all the bearing joints. In contrast, the individual bricks and flat joints are drawn only in the tricky places, in the corners, edges, and jams. Chapters. He relies on the masons eye and hand, on the masons knowing how to deal with tolerance. You see how he joins the edges and bridges because he never can stone. And that brick, concrete is the form of the material. The construction principle is casting. The building material itself is amorphous. The formwork, however, is not. Whether made of wood or steel is joined from elements and obeys tectonic flows. The working drawing of a, of a Concrete building does not show the building material itself, it shows only the formwork. The drawing of Herzog and Demeron shows a stair in scale 1 to 20. As you know, casting place concrete stair run cannot be cast overhead. And that's not all. The stair merge with the building, steps and balustrade are cast in one piece. This calls for the highest demands for the master builder. What are the specific pitfalls when building is exposed concrete? We know that concrete, exposed concrete cannot afford corrections. Every patch is visible. Everything has to be planned down to the last detail. Concreting stages, former classes, no mistakes are allowed. The architect has to control personally the construction sites. Now I will zoom in. You see on the right front of the head of the plan, zoom in. And there the first sentence in German, the architect is in by the Hirschfeld. In building a form game, the dream job frühzeitig to informieren und vor Ort beizuziehen. That's a lesson. 
that the body that has to be adorned early and ask that they have to be <laughs> on stage on the construction site when the form is filled. So Jacques Pierre had to go personally to the construction site. That shows what is mandatory if you build this. Uh, is it appropriate? That's what I told before. One piece, the whole building and stair in one piece. In Luigi's Nazi story, <coughs> there is no custom made wooden former, as it was with Jacques de Grom, wooden former. But industrial former panels made of steel. But also on this drawing, there is no, uh, you can find the same notes. You can read it, I think, in the middle, small sentence in the middle. <clears throat> this time it's in Italian, esigenze da rispettare, what means the requirements must be respected. Say no, working drawing. New shattering boards, same pitch, uniform board direction, specific arrangement of the meeting boards, no improvisation, planning is everything. But what this construction drawing shows too, Snow's is concern is to bring in harmony the measures of the framework and with the measures of the building. Now we switch to another material, to wood. It's the same when you build with wood, the material determines the measure of the elements. Imagine of the original tree, the maximum span of a wooden beam, even the transport with the, with the tree trunks with the trunk. This is a scale, a uh, plan with a scale of one to one of a window. Wooden structure follows a specific logic. Connections jointing all parts protected from water. One can recognize a carpenter's plan from a distance. The architect calculates the tolerances for the setting of the wood, he draws dimensional chains. The drawing of a timber construction is, is a match for the timber supply, therefore the carpenter. Hans Leitzinger makes a beacon house, draws the beams in a footage that you can see that the always this kind of it from the surrealist from Dutch decade. You put the paper on the book room and go with the graphic and have the uh, surface exactly one to one. And <clears throat> I think as with Lenin's drawing, you can feel it maybe the material and spend a bit. Although the components are very careful factor there is a soap at the workbench at the construction site to adjust the wooden slab. This is quite different with steam, where industrial prefabrication is mandatory. In steel contract construction, there are standard dimensions and profiles. And the construction principle is assembly. The focus is therefore on the connections and the profiles of the elements. No wonder perfect representation in steel drawing is the axonometry, and of course, details one to one. The French steel construction and entrepreneur Jean Grubé would not accept. The fact that such an immense amount of material 
And so much time was wasted just to be a single, small single family house. His mission, his mission was clear. Economy of material, easy assembly, short construction time. But with Proway, not only the construction method is economical, his drawing is economical as well. You can see there are no blanks on paper, not only the building material, the steel, but also the paper is precious. Efficiency is very simple. The next chapter I will show some hidden structure. <clears throat> and I would like to quote the phrase of Peter Sutter. I quote, Bird plants have a character of anatomical romance. They show something of the mystery and inner tension that the complete architectural body no longer reveals. The art of joining hidden geometries, the friction of materials, the inner forces of carrying and holding, the human world that goes into things. End of course. I think this is true even for things or for uh, working drawings as profane as an electrical insta installation. The following drawing, working drawings are coordination drawings. The architect coordinates the various little plates, masonry, carpentry, and woodwork, or even electric installations for water supply. As in this case, it's a <clears throat> working drawing for a single family house on Lake Zurich by Marcel Breuer. The electrical planner drew his specification directly to the architect's drawing. Second switch is zero. There is only one single drawing for both professions. What this drawing shows too, even an electrical plan can be aesthetic. If you take a resume to the once again to the head of the, of the drawing, what this drawing shows too. If you take a very close look, you can discover notes in two languages. And it tells a bit something about the story. Breyer had an office in New York, in New York at the time, and the notes show the transatlantic division of labor between New York and Lake Zurich construction site in Switzerland. You have to imagine in 1958 there was no fax, there was of course no mention mails, to mention the mails. So the heliographs went by letter post across the Atlantic. But how does an engineer plan, uh, electric plan look 50 years later? What looks like the mapping of an unknown planet is the installation plan for electric and water supply for the roof of the new elephant house to the Soviet Union. It's a wooden construction. The plan shows the fire section, piping, artificial rain, and moonlight. The small rectangles show the bracket for the metal convicts for the <coughs> The, lines. the red line shows the supply of the EFE caches. Installation plans are always heavily coated with colors and symbols. With the last example in this chapter, I will, I will show for once first picture of the building. What if your building material is water and air? <coughs> This is the Pavilion Dinner and Scoffee made for the Swiss Expo 2002. 
Can you imagine how a working drawing from a cloud looks like? This is, this is how the working drawing from a cloud looks like. Instead of a comment to this drawing, I would like to call the phrase by the French writer Stéphane Malamé. He says, a poem is not made of feelings, but of words. I think what uh, Stephen Malmerman says about poetry sums up the essence of architecture and construction in an engine. Coding is a very present topic. We stay with the color codes. And again, I will show you plans of different types, two hand drawings on one CA plan. <coughs> the Brazilian landscape architect Roberto Burlimaux designed the roof dorm for the Ministry of Education at Epsom Rio de Janeiro. It was the first high rise building in Latin America. To please the employees working in the, in the high rise, Ole Mounts covered the roof of the local Alex building with a composition of flowers. The <clears throat> working drawing shows the characteristics of Ole Mounts, who was also a painter. He always uses many of one kind of plants. He treats them like the colors on the palette of a painter. When I saw first this plan, I couldn't believe that it was a real uh, working drawing. It's, it's a composition of a forgotten, but it's not. Because then I that the actually was very minuscule, small, like numbers. They indicate the flower variety. So even if it doesn't look like, this painting is a serious construction memory. But the colors don't indicate the color of the flowers. They indicate the species of the plant. What looks like random is also here in composition. It is a meticulously planned and cold drawing for the stone mix by Carlos Garba. The colors do not denote the color of the stones, but the stone variety. Also, this working drawing is very characteristic for this object. For Carlos Garba, the detail room does not come at the end of design process. In his architecture, the detail reveals the entire building idea. His sketches are blueprints, and his blueprints are sketches. The working drawing serves serve also as a notebook. Take a look at this small notice in, in the left edge of the maximum a uh, very small note. It says, Telefonare Parini. A simple reminder. Don't forget to call Parini. However, this was. Lighto Conti, Carlos Garpa might change since the construction site. I had an old uh, friend who worked with Carlos Garpa and he told me a nice article. He said every morning when Carlos Garpa came on the construction site, the first question of the laborers were, what do we change today? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the, yeah. It brings that stuff of it, you can't only do things better. I 
um, as you see, the colors also like plants, or the colors that we follow don't code the, the color of the stones, it colors the um, specific of the stones type. Again, here, the colors of the plant do not denote the colors of the glass. But the position of the glass in the cross section of the tracery of the stone means masonry. You know, you can put the glass either in this section of the stone or different places. That's what the, the color does uh, reflect. The colors <clears throat> themselves are indicated by the numbers 72 shades. 11,263 squares or fields, but the composition is random and algorithm distributes the colors. You can see the color says where the glass is put in the masonry. The, the tracery and the number shows the colors here. What about uh, drawing spaces or how did space influence the working drawing? <coughs> the floor plan section and elevation are very human very practical and efficient. And in recently, the convention of architectural drawings was the orthogonal <laughs> representation of three coordinates. But even nowadays, 3D modelings are based on the X, Y, and Z axis. Nevertheless, the new drawing techniques have influenced the shapes of buildings and buildings and vice versa. However, non-orthogonal buildings also exist in the past. What if the space to be combined is not orthogonal? What if it, have, if it has a different shape? Then other forms and representations are required. I will show two plans whose objects could hardly be more different in scale. Yeah, more scale, same pictures for city and the tiny cellar bar of Vienna. Antonio Sangalo de Yano, you will have a longitudinal section to the nave of St. Peter's Basilica in ink and watercolor from handmade paper. But he wanted also. To show also the walls and those in the same two dimensional view. To the true to same section, he added perspective views, making visible the walls. You see this is uh, aquarelle with watercolor, and it's just it's enough to show in the section also the walls and the uh, not orthogonal spaces. The scale of the tiny cellar bar of Bale Schwarzenberg by Herman Czech is by far not comparable to St. Peter's though, of course. But the problem of representation is the same. With a few delicate lines, Czech complete the plan and make the wood visible. But what if you have to draw the facade of a complex volume? That is the Monterosa back from uh, the Glass Cave Studio at the Monterosa. The working drawing of Monterosa shows the entire facade in one single plane. It's a flat pattern. You know, maybe you know this, this 
by these paper model sheets of famous buildings you can buy in every souvenir shop. Mario Ridolfi has to solve the same task, but he draws a section, floor plan, and the elevation of his octagonal towers in only one go. Even the necessary details are there. Ridolfi said once that he could never draw a one to plan if he had not first drawn a plan. But one scale, very strange. Normally you hear it's a bigger scale, but he does the, the opposite. Then follows a one to ten plane, then a one to fifty, and then finally a one to hundred. Ridolfi's working units are like meditations on architecture. As we scroll for in Ridolfi's drawings, working drawing, and design sketches are in one. Even in a single building element, different types of work are involved, and different process that are addressed. The architect controls the interplay of the various distinct building points. Great. If we have a look at the window plan, the donkey plays in a working drawing from Alvaro Caesar. They are not factory made by fabrications according to plan, as you can read in the list in the plan, every see there on the right bottom. Pay attention also to this. This is a folded uh, bit uh, uh, fold lines. This is a unmistakable the sign that the drawing went to the construction site. See the added drawings in pencil and ball point to the blueprints. Look at his sketches. The master's handwriting is obvious. This drawing shows a very characteristic of his architect. There is no unimportant detail. A working drawing from the early days of prefabrication. What we see is how a ceiling and wall elements are connected. 60 and 86 connections are shown on the plan, but not enough. I will zoom in on this row on the head of the plan. Can you see these details? It's a plan list that refers to countless other plans where the same details can be found in every different combination. This is not exactly what one expects on a classical prefabrication plan. Prefabrication plan to be simplified and to make, and to simplify and to make buildings cheaper. But one has to consider that prefabrication was quite new at the time, and even the border of the drawing outside the drawing tells a story. I will zoom once again. The dinosaurs, <laughs> yes, so many years, your ex students can remember among us, they can still read these signs. Because before placing this field up in the graph on the paper, one had to make a test line to release the accumulated ink. <laughs> As an example for this second last chapter, I will show the drawing that we picked up of in the construction process as the evidence and serve directly as a tool. Scott Street Center ETH Observatory in Zurich. He draws the flower ornaments by for the scrofita of his ink on paper and scale one to one by hand. This is a construction drawing. And why? The drawing is only half drawn. 
If we take a look through the magnifying glass, like zoom in this case, it reveals the secret. There you see the very small patches in the paper on the right side. First, these holes are for sym symmetrical doubling. It's a very bad proof of method. But just for the paper, you decide that or I can the full paper, pierce the holes, unfold the paper, and we will have a perfect symmetry. But second, so the small holes, you can transfer the ornament directly and accurately to the plaster for the graffito. So this blueprint serves as a practical tool. <clears throat> we come to the last, the last chapter with two working drawings of buildings that go beyond any scale. Both drawings show similar shapes and immense size and meticulous detail. One, one is of middle age, the other is of the present. One is iron, gold, ink, or parchment, the other is a computer drawing. The new underground railway station in Zurich by Jean, -Philippe, uh, Jean Pierre Bury is a floor plan in scale 1 to 200, and the plan is almost 3 meters long. Can you see the numbering of the working drawing? I think we should have zoomed in again, but the plan number is 50,002.7. Plans necessary to build this <laughs> underground station. And again, it's coated red, red, yellow, black, new demolition system. But here, not only the drawing is built, the structure shown only extends over a length of more than a half kilometer. <clears throat> Zooming in the same drawing, one can see even the smallest details and zooming show. Even in this big scale drawing, every small detail is drawn. A special feature of the computer play, one might think. Never ends is the whole. It's a combination of big scale and very small scale. One might think that's a feature of CLA plan, as I said, but the last working drawing I'll show proves the opposite. This drawing is even higher, it's four meters high and composed of 20 animal skins. The scale is one to 36. If you enlarge this, this uh, drawing 36 times, it will cover the entire column cathedral, which is 157 meters high. The question about the exact function of this drawing has not been answered conclusively until today. As mentioned before, in the Middle Age drawings, the middle age drawings were not made for the reason, but made to convince the builder and the pattern. Here we don't know the whole story, but it's probable that this is one of the first construction books in history. No plan of comparable size is known from that. Perhaps for the first time, the builder's launch was faced with such a comprehensive drawing. It is a working drawing for several generations. Can you see the, 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 there is a the, the middle? You can see a very fine line. <clears throat> the 
there are two drawing, two drawings that are glued together. And this blue line tells the history of how the drawing was recovered. The first drawing, the half of this, was discovered in the early 19th century in the attic of an in Darmstadt, Germany. Totally unexpected, two years later, another drawing was found at the aquarium in Paris by accident. <clears throat> the two drawings were brought together, they fitted exactly together. Through the two drawings were the two halves of one big drawing of the facility. And with the plan piece together, construction of the column dome from the cathedral was restarted after a century long standstill. In 1880, the facade was finally completed according to a drawing made. To, uh, in 1280, six centuries earlier. Next to, and soon in as well as we did in Durek's uh, train station of the drawing. Even the most elements are drawn in detail, details that no human will ever see, that only the birds can see or perhaps according to the belief of the builders, the eye of God. The two working drawings testify the transformation of the architectural profession from craftsman to technician and planner. The working drawing, like architecture itself, is neither an independent aesthetic object nor a purely technical instrument. Its beauty is not an end in itself. It has the beauty of the useful. This is what I wanted to show with this lecture. No matter it was what means you draw a plan, whether it's pencil, ink, or watercolor, or with digital means, a working room has be beautiful. I am deeply convinced that one cannot build a beautiful house with an happy blueprint. Therefore, please draw beautiful blueprints. It's the last picture I come back to the beginning. Like Japonti, Marisa Swiss and his story on the construction side. That's the last picture I come back to the opening of my second marriage. Thank you. Of the nostalgia of the analog, or 
the historical value of this and growing hand. But scandalous, I didn't understand a lot. But the beauty of the hand growing comes from the nostalgia of people's analog thing or the historical value that it has. But it, uh, can I ask your opinion of the hand growing? Like, yeah, it's, is the beauty of it's a good question. We, we did it also when we were working on this book. And the first step when making this research, I invited all my friends and colleagues to, to send a, a construction drawing, working drawing. And it was, it was really a bit hard because I would like, I would have liked to show that it doesn't matter because I, I observed that students who are good in hand drawing also do beautiful uh, computational drawings. It's obvious, it's, it's a question of your eye, of your watching, of your perception. But then when we compare the plans, yeah, it was not so easy to find a really beautiful plan. That was a bit long, it was a bit like it is, but I think there is no matter. I think both have their uh, full dialing English only. Um, advantages. advantages, and I think the best is to, to be good in both and to also to use both. If you go to construction site nowadays, you will you will change the, the information is that a discipline. So of course you draw this with the CAE and I also have some really beautiful drawings in the book uh, computation drawings. But I think it, it's not the reason to lose the draw to draw the uh, a hand plan. It's quick. And you, I think hand drawing is, is different in your brain because if you if you if you draw by computer, you always have to make these uh, uh, dimensions and you have to think about numbers and you have to you have totally different uh, your brain is different differently working and with a hand drawing. You can relax a bit your brain. <laughs> oh, not totally, of course, but really. And then maybe something flew in your head. And it's it's just it's a different type of, of drawing. I wouldn't put one against the other, but I would strongly uh, recommend not to lose the ability to draw also by hand. Thank you. Yeah, in the beginning you said this your own thing picture. And then uh, you said you was changing the, the working problem on the location. And then you said something that is a new city, a new system of uh, problem system to come to that end of the working problem. What did you mean exactly by that? I think it is a we have a bit a uh, loss of the or it's a change that in the times of Scarpa and Pong, you could go to the construction site and make changes. It was maybe also, as you heard, uh, the Mason say, it had the she would be changed today, but it was possible. You could see that. This process that I think you know that if you go on the construction site, you always see something that maybe is not as you meant, or it's a bit different, or there is a, a fault, or a, a thing, something to correct, but then you are so fixed on your plan. Nowadays, you really get a strafe. Punishment. Huh? Punishment? Yes, a punishment <laughs> if you change something. And I, for me, that's not the future. And I'm really, I'm, I hope, or maybe I'm also a bit uh, convinced <coughs> that maybe in future this will change again. I think for, for our building culture, it would be good to open a bit more this process. 
that we can really change something or uh, make a bit more improvision on the on the building side because to detect new ideas or new techniques it's not the best to be so orientated on safety or not to make uh, any fault and that's my hope that's what i saw because i think in the future the construction I think what we really should change and have to think about is how we use the time in building. Now all is about time because time is so expensive. And I think maybe the future can change and that will influence the building process a lot and heavily. And that I'm sure. Uh, thank you for your lectures. Um, I really enjoyed it. If you would speak to another uh, 
craftsmen of another country, another continent, or even in another time, and quote, we are lost. But we can read still the, the colon, uh, say plan, or we can read the plan of centuries along. So this is really a language that bridges cultures, time, epochs, everything. So I think that what makes a language strong, but that's not the answer. <laughs> uh, the digital drawing influences the reading. I mean, that the language, uh, for example, I was thinking like uh, some uh, softwares or some programs drawing are less detailed than other ones. So I was thinking like, for example, a door in a program doesn't look like the same in the other one. So how, but the, that difference represented in, 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 in the language of drawing. The meaning of a door in a drawing can change from one, uh, from one software to one. Okay, <laughs> how the how the digital drawing influences the architecture. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> that's a bit of problem. So. So, not this fantastic story that the, the drawing is even better. See, it goes through the time. Uh, I think as the language languages, they come to the same as the drawing. It's because you look at the drawing, because you make the drawings into certain stuff. So, you was yourself a drawing maker. So that's why you see in drawings more than there has perhaps put inside because you have more associations because you have self ideas. So when people nowadays draw by don't have this expertise in just by hand drawing or taking the drawing, less as so in the past, it might be that they have not the and the habit of seeing what in the drawing is. Yeah, but that's a good point because then I know this a little bit from my own teaching that when I look at drawings and I really had to point things in the drawings which explain something about. Which is not in the drawings because what is in the drawings can sometimes explain what you would have seen in the drawings. Mm -hmm. So that's the question of space and the quotes you talk about. Is that, uh, you know, I like this electricity drawing. And the red lights start in the center of a room and then they go to all the electricity. Yeah, it's also so the cool. same drawing is that as telling, let's say, how the things. The whole installation system develops, it's also in space. It's not a linear thing, it's, a, it's the most complicated type of drawing you have to explain. That you have light, you can have light, which is, you know, this is, this is there's light, there's space because we have light, you can see. So then this drawing tries to tell you how it works. I think that's a type of reading. Yeah, yeah. Like this. So it's I very good to develop that more and more, I think, by doing the drawings yourself. Perhaps, perhaps. I think. Yeah, you're right. And then from an old generation, which have never worked. <laughs> but we are not able to read uh, uh, you. It's plan I showed for a restaurant framework, for example. You can't, oh no, I, I could have shown have shown only a, a working drawing for a computer uh, basing craftsman as a computer by uh, by for example by uh, 
and about your color and have a school. You can't read it. You read it. It's just a program. You just agree. And it really has a changes to be there. Because, for example, when I say the, the, the recall of labyrinths, you can only build it if you have a, a field of tolerances. Uh, I will not say the Albemarle's language if you prefer. <laughs> yeah, you see that this is not <laughs> You have to place it a bit by yeah. feeling. feelings or, uh, or uh, uh, experimentation, uh, experience. And the computer can do what he has to do totally accept without any fault. But this is not going to be adjust a bit or bridge a bit. Um, this was like a lack of sensibility. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, make it as a uh, qualitative judgment. No, for me, that's not qualitative judgment, it just is. And that, of course, influences the kind of being. I'm sorry, it is that you would accept that. But it's not true when I said uh, the building and the uh, drawing is a language that bridges the times because nowadays it's, it's really a change. And every time tools change the object, so I'm absolutely convinced that the tool of the new uh, building process, uh, building and uh, drawing will also influence the building. And the food and the fish and the food. Hello, thank you for your lecture. Perhaps to continue on another suspicion, what do you uh, think about the role of the working drawings in the world of uh, algorithmic modeling and abstract 3D depictions? Uh, increasing, increasingly replace direct experience. What is the role of the work in drawing today? Well, it's just for to me to construct without drawing is just so much. Yeah, how uh, important or I don't know, how Maybe how what changes uh, can we see in previous working drawings and today with all the deep technology and pretty modeling? I must say I don't have so many experiences with modeling, and it's not more drawing program, so I I'm not so sure if we can replace the drawing by product anymore. I think it's the only tool for to get something. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So if, if I follow your, your question, I should say that the, the program is replacing the tool. No, how it does make it more how the programs influence the working drawings. I'm not, I'm not saying that they replace the working drawings, but how they influence the working drawings. I don't know what you say. I'm not so sure. I, I think that <coughs> maybe the work, working drawing. So it's
especially looking in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Like, early on in the presentation, you had a slide about like what they call a super robot. How you describe it almost as a sketch. That's uh, what they're used to. What's the like to ask? How would you find that? It seems so hard. So foreign, but I would also like to ask that the like, person in the past give yourself a personal experiment or a personal challenge to try and use an alternative working drawing process or personal construction project or something like that. I personally know I won't always follow the, the yeah, common. Kind of making working on it, but I saw this. I saw they 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 grow, and I I have come to this this changing. Uh, don't we know this thing like this? And I think it's absolutely he has to have this very good uh, draftsman. They make the process of translation in their heads. They see the finished building and they have also sketches how to make details. But they have to have a work of interpretation of a plan is much bigger than if you have this detail. It's also interesting how, how this office works and, and totally. For us, it's very uh, time for out of time. It's old fashioned. Yeah, it seems old fashioned, but that was the question I put there. Maybe you would change this. I really am. I think it's not so sure as how we will be in the future. For me, one of them. <laughs> I wish the material would be very expensive. <laughs> I think if we, uh, if we will change our report uh, 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 relationship, yeah, relation to time, the, the best uh, <coughs> that would help you. If you really have to be very careful with materials, because it's so rare, is in fact. And maybe it's a car change, and then maybe such a construction methods will be again. Uh, and then, uh, who knows? Thank you. <laughs>